Hello and welcome back to Sig Mechanics. I'm Edmund. In this video, I'm going to show you in detail how to install the factory manual safety lever on a P365. Let's begin. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer, I'm not a gunsmith or a certified armorer, and any modifications or work done to a firearm should be completed and inspected by a qualified gunsmith. If you do use this video as a reference, please note that you are responsible for any and all legal, health, and warranty consequences that may be incurred. For starters, I want to answer a common question regarding this conversion process, which is whether or not the P365 is capable of installing a manual safety lever if it didn't already come with one from the factory. And the answer to that is yes, because as you will see, once we disassemble the P365, no matter what version or model of the 365 you have, and this one here is the XL model, the FCU inside them are all manufactured with the same design, meaning that all you would need to complete this modification is to have the factory parts on hand, which I have here thanks to modguns.com. So uh, let's quickly go over what these parts are and then begin the installation process. The factory manual safety lever assembly is comprised of three parts. The levers themselves, which come as a single construction machine injection molded part, the detent spring, and the detent pin. And if you are looking to convert from non-manual safety to manual safety, you will also need to have the grip module that has the manual safety cutout in it. And here we have both types of grips. And as you can see, this one here on the left has no cutout and the one on the right has the manual safety notch. And with these parts, we can now complete the installation, beginning with the preparation of the manual safety assembly. To start, take your lever and with the longer end of the wings oriented forward, locate the hole at the rear here of the manual safety. And this hole is where you will now install your detent assembly. And to do that, take your detent spring and then carefully drop it into the cavity. Uh, now, if you want to go an extra step and protect yourself from possibly losing the spring later on, I would highly recommend that you dab a tiny amount of grease on the spring first so that once you insert it, the grease will prevent it from easily falling back out. Once the detent spring is installed, take your detent, and uh, this is installed in the same hole, and make a note that the detent has a larger diameter tapered top end and a smaller diameter pin at the bottom end. And so when we insert the detent, uh, we will do so with the bottom pin going in first. And then when you do that, you can just gently push the detent in until you feel the spring's resistance. And now uh, a quick warning, do not attempt to compress the spring and detent uh, because although technically speaking, there's nothing wrong with doing that, many people, including myself, can attest to the fact that if the detent and spring go flying across the room, you're going to have a hard time locating such small parts. So uh, one once you place the parts in the lever here, carefully take this assembly and just put it to the side and move on to the next step, which is to insert the assembly into the FCU. Do that, we're going to remove the FCU from the grip module, and you may already know how to do this, but if you don't, just lock back the slide, turn the takedown lever to the six o'clock position, release the slide, and then guide it forward with your hands. And once it's out, lift the slide catch up to release the takedown lever from the six o'clock position. Now to unseat the FCU from the grip module, you will need a pin punch or another thin diameter tool to push the retention pin out of the rear of the grip module from right to left. And now just grip the FCU from the rear side and then pull up until the FCU unsits from the grip. And so now your FCU will look like this. And now we can begin to install the safety lever assembly into the FCU. And I just want to quickly draw your attention to the rear of the FCU for a second, because as I mentioned earlier, all P365 FCUs are capable of accepting the factory manual safety lever assembly, uh, because if you look at the rear here, you can see that the FCU has this large hole, and that design is specifically there to accept the manual safety lever into it. And that design is on every single P365 FCU, regardless of the configuration you bought it in. So unlike, uh, for example, the 320, that you would either have to purchase an FCU with the manual safety cutout already, or perhaps convert it uh, using the Sig Mechanics M safety kit. In the case of the 365, uh, you can make this conversion at your discretion. It's just a matter of having the factory parts. To install the manual safety assembly, first double check that you've released the takedown lever from the six o'clock position by lifting the slide catch. And this is important because when the takedown lever is engaged, and just pay attention to the sear as I turn the takedown lever, the sear drops down 
down in order to move itself out of the way of the striker. And this is the fundamental purpose of the takedown lever, as you would not be able to remove the slide with the sear in the raised position. Uh, but also, if the sear remains down, the underside of the sear will prevent the uh, hooked portion of the manual safety's body uh, from having sufficient clearance to drop into place. And I'm putting focus on this step for a few reasons. First, it's a critical step in the installation. Second, it explains uh, to you some of the mechanics that make the 365 work. And third, I wanted to bring to your attention the hooked end here uh, because you will need to be conscious of this hook for the next step. Okay, so with the takedown lever disengaged and while holding your FCU upside down at a 45 degree angle, you can now take the manual safety lever assembly we prepared earlier. So it has the spring and detent installed already. And while keeping the detent facing upwards in order to prevent the parts from falling out, begin to place the lever into the slot of the FCU. And there is a particular movement that you want to make here because although you can technically just force it in, the install will be substantially smoother if you do it like this. Insert the levers so that the hook of the manual safety lever body is placed just behind this bar over here on the FCU. And at the same time, when the hook is in place, slide the manual safety lever body upwards so that the right uh, lever physically contacts the right side of the FCU frame. And so when you have that lined up, you can see that uh, this rounded tab on the trigger bar is slightly interfering with the manual safety lever. So if you temporarily pull the trigger just enough to move the trigger bar, you will create the clearance needed and with a slight curve, you can simply drop in the lever body. Now, once the lever body is in, continue to turn the levers so that the detent is at 90 degrees, so straight up, and then shift the lever body to the opposite side of the FCU so that the housing that the detent is in is now parallel to the FCU frame. And now you can begin to rotate the manual safety lever to the point uh, in which the detent touches the rear of the FCU. Now I'm going to take a moment here before moving on to the next step to warn you that in the next step, we will be compressing the internal spring and detent in order to have it snap into place uh, within this uh, first notch over here on the FCU. And so if you're going to lose your detent and spring, this is generally the part where this will happen. Uh, now, that's not to scare you off because as you will see, this is actually a very simple easy step. And I will show you the tricks to mitigate errors, but I felt uh, that pointing this out now before you begin will allow you to be a little bit more conscious and careful about uh, what you're doing as you follow along. So in order to insert the detent into the notches formed on the FCU, first take note of the tapered edges of the head of the detent. And if you notice that the tapered edges are sloping right to left while holding the FCU and looking at it from the bottom, uh, you'll want to manually rotate the detent just a quarter turn so that the tapered edges are now sloping front to back. And by doing so, you are using the detent's geometry to ease into the notches. And the front to back orientation is actually the one that the detent naturally follows when it's in the notches. Uh, now, I will point out that if you install it the other way so that the tapered edges are right to left, uh, once you snap the detent into place, the detent will naturally rotate itself into position as you activate and deactivate the levers a few times. But you will also probably need to use a pin punch to force the detent in as you rotate the levers into position, uh, which is where most people end up losing parts. So my preferred method here is uh, probably going to be providing the most amount of protection from losing those parts, and you most likely will not need any tools. So uh, with the tapered edges front to back, rotate the lever so that the detent um, binds onto the FCU frame like I'm doing here. And what I'm doing is just applying some downward force, which has helped me hold the detent from moving or falling out. And while applying this force, I'm just gonna take my thumb, cover the front end of the detent so that the detent can't just easily spring back out on me. And I'm going to begin to compress the spring and detent into the house while rotating the lever. And you will feel the detent uh, slightly drop into place as you're pushing. Of course, you do this in one continuous motion, but I'm slowing this down so you can see the action. Um, but if uh, at that point you continue to rotate the lever a bit more, the detent will snap into place and you're now good to remove your thumb. And at this point, we can now complete our first function check. And if you can freely activate and deactivate the safety levers, uh, you are now ready to reassemble the P365. However, before I do that, I want to show you 
how the manual safety mechanically functions in the 365 because the design of the FCU makes it relatively hard to see the inner workings. And so to do this, I'm going to use this 3D model of the FCU to break the laws of physics a bit and provide subscribers with a deeper understanding of what's going on when you activate the manual safety. Uh, however, for those of you who want to jump right into the reassembly of the FCU back onto the grip, uh, you can jump to the timestamp on the screen here. The basic mechanics of the P365 work like this. The operator pulls the trigger, which compresses the trigger bar spring and then leverages the trigger bar to move forward. The trigger bar eventually makes contact with the sear's leg and begins to pull down the sear so that the striker can be released. Within the slide sits the striker, and the striker is positioned so that the hooked leg at the bottom, when the slide has been racked, is interacting with the sear's ledge. As the operator continues to pull the trigger, the sear will continue to drop until the striker's leg disengages from the sear's ledge and the 365 discharges. When the manual safety is installed and deactivated, the hook on the body of the manual safety lever sits slightly back and therefore out of the way of the sear. So when the operator pulls the trigger, the sear is free to drop. However, when the manual safety lever is activated, the hook on the body of the manual safety is now rotated back and rests just below a block of material formed into the underside of the sear body. In this scenario, if the operator pulls the trigger, the trigger bar will pull the sear, but the sear will be physically prevented from moving past the hook on the manual safety lever, thus providing you with a hard stop on the trigger pull. Now, a common question related to the manual safety that people ask is why it is that when the 365 has discharged or has been dry fired, it's no longer possible to activate or deactivate the safety lever until you rack the slide again. And this is due to the design of the 365. When the striker is released, it will travel forward, and when it stops, it will end up on top of the sear. And when this happens, the base of the striker's hook slightly depresses the sear down and blocks the sear from rising back up again. This then makes it impossible for the hook on the body of the safety lever to rotate because it's blocked by the same piece of material that we discussed earlier, physically stopping the sear from dropping when the safety is active. Now, it's not until the operator either racks a slide or the P365 is fired that the striker's hook makes its way back far enough for the sear to return to its normal resting position, which leaves the hook on the manual safety body with the required space it needs to be rotated again. To reassemble the P365, uh, you can no longer use the standard grip module, so you will need the 365 grip that has the manual safety cutout into it. And to start, take your FCU with the newly installed manual safety lever and install it at a 45 degree angle, trigger first into the grip, and seat it into position. And this is because the grip has these uh, molded ledges inside that sort of um, grip the FCU once installed. So uh, you need to angle the FCU in order to hook the FCU under those ledges, which will then retain the FCU grip. Now I'm just going to reinstall the retention pin that we removed earlier. Now lift the slide catch, and while holding the slide catch, rotate the tape down lever to the six o'clock position, and then gently release the slide catch. Uh, next, hook the uh, slide onto the FCU rails, lock back the slide, rotate the tape down lever, and release the slide. And now we can do a final function check. So with the manual safety deactivated, the striker releases, and now with the safety activated, I can no longer pull the trigger, and the 365 is rendered safe. Now, just a quick note, when I release the video you're watching right now, I will also post another video showing you how to remove the manual safety from the 365, which is especially helpful if you're looking to do a deep clean or just looking to change up the design of your build. Okay, so before I end this video, I want to let you guys know that ModGuns and Sig Mechanics have teamed up to start a new Facebook group called the Sig Sour Community. And here you guys can share your builds with us and other members of the community, ask us or the community questions, and you will also start finding exclusive Sig Mechanics content and educational videos on a variety of Sig Sour products. And also in time, we will be hosting community events and competitions against other members of the group, uh, where you will be able to 
to win prizes and merchandise. So if you're on Facebook, come and join the community. As usual, a big thank you to ModGuns for being a huge supporter of the Sig Mechanics channel, and they do supply many of the parts necessary for me to make these videos. So uh, please go check them out and support them if you can. And also, of course, a sincere thank you to all of you who support this channel, either by subscription or by engaging with the community in the comment section of these videos, and especially to those of you who are sharing these videos uh, on various forums and with others in uh, different communities who may not know about this channel. Uh, the exponential growth of this channel is in major a part due to all of you, and so once again, thank you. Okay, that's all I have for you today. See you soon.